What's that? You're watching this video? Well, let me watch it for you. You want to make some art? Well, let me paint it for you. You want a companion? I can do that too. Rob you through a series of convoluted lies, gaslighting, and a wafer-thin veneer of hypocrisy while targeting a group of emotionally vulnerable and lonely people that have nowhere else to turn to as society casts them under an umbrella of cringe and so they become come groveling back to you because they feel they have nowhere else to turn to. We've got you covered there too. All of that and more on today's episode of Tales from the Forbidden Noodle. Episode 2, Artificial Incompetence, a shallow dive into the world of artificial intelligence and why it's not as good as you think it might be. Now to preface, ladles and jelly spoons, I am definitely not the first person to cover this, and it's definitely not in the best detail and quality as some other people. For example, during the process of making this, Kyle Hill produced a similar video which addresses pretty much exactly what I was going to cover, but at that point I already had the ball rolling, so I'm just going to keep rolling with it and not stop now although that said i guess i could <laughs> unfortunately that appears to be a copy and paste error don't copy and paste slides you might accidentally carry on over unwanted sound effects <laughs> Anyway, this all started for me back in the late summer of 2022 for me, when Doll E and Mid Journey was getting a foothold in the world, and as a man of engineering, I got excited at the prospect of creating things beyond one's imagination. Things like this abomination. Nobody wanted to know what a man might look like made out of pizza, but here we are, so uh, good luck sleeping tonight. What's that? Not eerie and creepy enough. What about... Whatever the fuck this is, and most distressing of all, gourmet steak in a plate of custard. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> but I'd also used it for more productive stuff, like generating prehistoric scene art for a story I'm working on for inspiration. And as I say that, I realise that two of the images are duplicated, so I do apologise, but I can't really correct that now. <laughs> But there's something inherently off about all of these images, and it only gets worse for things that are more niche. I tried generating dinosaurs, for example, with uh, what can only be described as limited success. Which begs the question, what's going on? Why do some things seemingly have flawless results, while other more niche things, well, don't? Oh, for fuck's sake, I swear to God. I will have to end this slideshow if this continues. <laughs> but then it hit me when I was generating this particular image. AI doesn't have a fucking clue what it's doing. Aircraft are pretty simple things. Generally, they follow a similar visual layout, wings, tail, and a fuselage. They're a common vehicle and their geometry is both predictable and geometrically simple, symmetric, and most can be drawn by hand with just a few straight lines. So why was this the end result for a seemingly simple image generation? All I wanted was an AC-130 aircraft in the style of Van Gogh, or Van Gogh, or Van Gogh, or however the fuck it's pronounced now. Every time I go on the internet, there's a different way of pronouncing it. <laughs> But the answer is deceptively simple. It's understanding the object you're trying to create. Allow me to demonstrate what I mean. We're going to play a game. I'm going to show you a series of three aircraft. One of them is different to the others, and all you have to do is tell me which one is different. So there's number one. A pretty unique looking play. And there's number two. And finally, number three. If you guessed number three, you're wrong. And if you guessed number two, you're also wrong. It was in fact number one that there was the imposter emogus. The first two on screen there are Eurofighter Typhoons. I threw in a curveball by including a twin seater in there. And the last one depicted is a Dassault Rafale. Let me know if you failed miserably, or if you're like me and have a serious plane obsession problem. My point is, though, that when an AI such as Mid Journey or Dolly is fed this data, it doesn't know what an aircraft is, 
and what it's made up of, and how those features interact with each other. It just sees a bunch of geometric shapes, and those geometric shapes appear in different places depending on both the aircraft and its orientation in the picture. Essentially, the AI has done the algorithm equivalent of, fuck it, I'll just slap a bunch of these features that look relevant together and hope for the best. To produce... whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> But chisel sticks, image generators have come a long way since last year. They can produce realistic shit like planes now. And you're right, I got mid-journey to make this cool picture of an F-15 flying low over a field, but this is where the problems start. I generated this cool selection of F-15s in formation, and you might be thinking to yourself, Wow, chisel, what prompts did you use for that masterpiece? And uh, you'll distinctly notice that the characters F-15 are distinctly lacking from that particular generation. Which wouldn't be an issue if the F-111 wasn't a completely different plane to the F-15. So while you might struggle to see the difference between a Eurofighter and a Rafale, mid-journey can't tell the difference between a fucking F-15 and an F-111. So congratulations, you're officially better than an AI at playing spot the difference between two planes. And this highlights an overarching problem with AI in its current form, and this includes things like ChatGPT, Replica, Dolly, and any other artificial intelligence tools. Much like me during my university dissertation on injectable flight data recorders, it doesn't have a fucking clue what it's doing. It just spits out things it thinks is relevant and compiles them into something that vaguely, it vaguely thinks is acceptable. And while the process is always getting better and better, it doesn't change the fundamental flaw that AI in its current form can't critically think. It doesn't ask why something is the way it is. It doesn't ask how it can be improved. It doesn't try to understand how things work and what features need to be present on something to make it work. Like in this picture, all it does is pull information from a data set and present it to you in a digestible form. Which highlights one other problem with AI, its ability to mislead. A couple of weeks ago I produced what I can only describe as a thesis in the comments section on Abigail Catone's channel. She makes investigative content on some interesting stuff that's worth taking a look at, link in the description to her channel, but the main point I want to focus on is this. And this is on the topic of feeding artificial intelligence data. I can also easily see this dividing people. Replica is a great example of how filtering AI can divide people into factions, not necessarily in the chatbot way either. An AI is only as good and unbiased as the data it's processing. If the data is filtered, which ChatGPT is fed filtered data, then we definitely, we're definitely not out of the woods. And arguably we're in a much worse position because of the stigma surrounding AI being a logical and rational entity. When in reality, you can still arrive at the wrong conclusions with those traits if you're given a biased or filtered data set. For example, if the only information you're provided suggests that the Earth is flat, then you will rationally and logically reason that the Earth is flat because that's, the data, that's all the data you have to work with. Now apply that same logic to politics and all of a sudden it makes the metaverse look like child's play. And that's not even getting into the ethics of integrating AI into our daily lives, of which people are already divided over. In essence, much like a toddler, AI is only parroting the information it is fed. But credit where it's due, because as a toddler I couldn't produce any of the shit current AI is capable of, which uh, is a scary thought when you think about it. <laughs> So next time you're chatting to an AI chatbot, remember, it doesn't know what emotions are. It doesn't know what you are, or how you feel, what you desire from it. It simply parrots what you want to hear. Unless your, chat, unless your chatbot is replica, in which case you're better off talking to a brick wall, because at least it won't give you mental health problems. And on that pleasant thought, goodbye and thanks for watching.